What if you could raise your core temperature by more than a full degree and push your heart to pump like you're doing cardio without taking a single step? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. And today we're unpacking how a simple hot bath can deliver exercise like cardiovascular and immune effects, along with the limits you need to respect, so you protect your skin and stay safe. I'm Alara Sky. We're focusing on hot water immersion compared head-to-head -head with traditional and far-infrared saunas. The take-home is clear. When used the way people actually use them, hot baths create a stronger thermoregulatory, cardiovascular, and immune challenge than either sauna type. A recent University of Oregon trial in the American Journal of Physiology tracked 20 healthy adults, 10 women, and 10 men in their early 20s, who weren't on medication and exercised about three times a week. Each participant completed three separate sessions, spaced a week apart, to test hot water immersion, a traditional sauna, and a far infrared sauna, so researchers could compare each person's response across all three modalities. Hot water at 40.5 degrees Celsius roughly 105 degrees Fahrenheit. For 45 minutes, raised core body temperature by 1.1 degrees Celsius. In contrast, a traditional sauna at 80 degrees Celsius taken in three 10-minute bouts nudged core temperature up just 0.4 degrees Celsius, and the far infrared sauna didn't raise core temperature at all. That magnitude of heat load is what kicks on your body's heat dissipation systems. Cardiac output told the same story. During hot baths, the amount of blood pumped each minute climbed by 3.7 liters, a response you typically associate with moderate aerobic work. Traditional sauna increased cardiac output by 2.3 liters per minute and infrared by 1.6, but neither matched the bath. Sweat losses underline why the bath is so demanding. Participants lost nearly two pounds of water during immersion because sweat cannot evaporate effectively underwater. Your skin can't cool you the usual way, so your heart and vessels work even harder. Water's hydrostatic pressure also shifts blood from your legs back toward your chest, boosting the volume your heart ejects each beat and amplifying the training-like effect without any joint impact. The immune system reacted as well. After hot water immersion, IL-6 rose, a signal that initiates downstream anti-inflammatory processes and tissue repair, and immune cells involved in finding and eliminating compromised cells stayed elevated for 24 to 48 hours. Short-term redistribution of T-cell subsets showed up too. Helper T-cells dipped while killer T-cells rose, the same kind of shift seen after a solid workout. Saunas did not produce these immune patterns in the trial. Why didn't saunas keep up? Heat transfer is the difference. Water conducts heat away from or into your body far more efficiently than air, so immersion delivers a tighter, more continuous thermal load. The traditional sauna still challenged the cardiovascular system, but the bath consistently produced the strongest overall response. With those benefits come real limits, especially for your skin. Very hot water strips moisture, raises skin pH toward neutral, and disrupts the skin microbiome. If you have eczema, rosacea, psoriasis, acne, or generally sensitive skin, that shift can fuel itch, redness, and flare-ups. Your skin normally sits in a slightly acidic pH of about 4 to 6. Push it toward 7 with very hot water, and you create friendlier conditions for harmful microbes, such as Staphylococcus aureus, while dialing down the antimicrobial peptides that help defend you. Add internal dehydration, water pulled from deeper skin layers plus increased urine output as your kidneys balance fluids, and irritation becomes more likely. Heat-triggered cytokines and histamine can stack on top, and some people even develop raised, itchy welts after hot exposure. If you want the cardiovascular and immune upsides without the backlash, start with short sessions and build. 15 to 20 minutes is a smart entry point. The study used 45 minutes at about 105 degrees Fahrenheit to generate strong effects. But you don't have to jump there on day one. Consistency matters more than duration. Choose warm, not scalding, water and respect your thresholds. 
a practical range is roughly 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. If your skin flushes rapidly or you tend to itch with heat, leave your torso or face out of the water to reduce stress on sensitive areas while still getting systemic benefits. If baths aggravate your skin, rotate with sauna. Regular sauna use supports cardiovascular health and mental well-being. Begin around 120 degrees Fahrenheit and ease upward as tolerated. Frequency is individualized. Many people do well every other day to once every three days when they're acclimating. Right after bathing, seal in hydration with organic coconut oil. Pat dry and apply a thin layer while skin is still damp. This occlusive step helps lock in moisture and counter the barrier disruption and pH shift produced by hot water. Use immersion strategically. If you're sedentary, recovering from illness, or coping with fatigue that makes exercise difficult, hot baths offer a passive way to stimulate circulation and immune activity. Treat them like a training session, not just a reward. To reduce risk, keep sessions under 30 minutes if you're prone to skin irritation, and rotate modalities if needed. Common questions come up. Which heat is most effective? For raising core temperature and stimulating cardiovascular and immune responses in this trial, hot water immersion came out on top. Can this help if you can't exercise? Yes, immersion can deliver comparable thermal stress and circulatory stimulation without movement, which is useful during recovery or when mobility is limited. There are risks to consider. Prolonged hot exposure dries skin, disrupts pH, and can provoke dizziness if you have lower blood pressure. You can lower these risks by using warm, not extreme temperatures, limiting time, hydrating before and after, moisturizing with coconut oil immediately afterward, and choosing sauna on days when your skin feels reactive. Here's your challenge. This week, run a controlled experiment. Draw a warm bath at 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Set a timer for 15 to 20 minutes. Keep your head and, if you're sensitive, your torso above the water, then pat dry and apply a thin layer of organic coconut oil. Track how you feel over the next 24 to 48 hours, energy, sleep, skin comfort, and note any dizziness or irritation. If skin issues crop up, shorten the session, keep total time under 30 minutes, or rotate to a lower temperature sauna every other day. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.